Good morning and welcome to St. Francis of Assisi in Utua, Tennessee. We are delighted you are worshiping with us this morning and invite you to download the full text bulletin from our website, sfaec.org, and there you will get that full text bulletin that includes all the hymns we are singing, all our scripture readings, as well as the prayers that we are doing this morning together. And so please go, if you have not already, and download it. And our opening hymn this morning is hymn 435, At the Name of Jesus, Every Knee Shall Bow. full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. book of 
Genesis, realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If we die, we die to the Lord. 
So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the living and the dead. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the book of Matthew. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father, will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Oftentimes, when this passage from Matthew is preached upon, there tends to be a sneer against Peter asking about seven times, because of course we know it takes more than that, right? But I wonder, I wonder if we're truly honest, if we can't better put ourselves in Peter's shoes and how much seven times might seem on any given day. To forgive once certain sins done against us can seem insurmountable. And then to multiply that by a factor of seven, and then by another factor of seven, and so forth, it's almost incomprehensible, isn't it? The truth is that forgiveness is not easily come by on our own. It takes different eyes. It takes a turn of the heart for us to really enter into forgiveness, not something by our will, but something done with God's help. And that's exactly the point of the Joseph story today. And in case you're not familiar with this story, while I could tell you that uh, you could go watch Joseph's Technicolor Dreamcoat and get the full story, let me give you a quick overview. Joseph was the favorite son 
of his father, Jacob, who would become known as Israel. And he had a tendency to kind of hold it over his brothers. Not only that, he dreamed big dreams. And in those dreams, it was he who was raised up and his brothers bowing down to him in different forms, be it stalks of corn or whatever. And instead of welcoming such dream interpretations, the brothers were less than pleased. And finally, they'd had it. And one day when his father sent out Joseph out to check on his brothers, they fell upon him threw him in a pit and left him where he was taken into captivity and sold as a slave in Egypt. And so realizing what they had done, they made up a story that a wild animal had killed their brother and broke their father's heart by telling them, by telling him that his son was dead. It's pretty hard to imagine how far someone can go in anger and then in panic. But the story goes that Joseph, despite mistreatment at the first house he was sold into, spending time in prison, that gift that God gave him of understanding and interpreting dreams led to his coming to Pharaoh's attention. And when he interpreted the Pharaoh's dream and made wise decisions with the Pharaoh about how to use the goods they had in preparation for seven years of famine that were ahead, Pharaoh made him head over all the supplies of Egypt. And lo and behold, the famine hit Cana where his brothers and fathers still lived, and they had to come and ask for help. But they didn't recognize Joseph, all dressed up as an Egyptian now, grown up. And Joseph didn't tip his hand either, and instead let his brothers sweat it out, asking for help, and even kept their brother Benjamin, his full-blooded brother, with him, not revealing himself, and made them go back and bring their father to Egypt. And so, in all of this treachery that he practiced, he suddenly realized what he was doing, how he had become just like his brothers, and instead broke down and wept and revealed himself and his brothers started apologizing. He said, no, no, God meant this for good. You meant it for ill, but God meant it for good. Well, fast forward, they've been living in Egypt for a while, and today's reading comes after their father has died. And his brothers still believe that their father was really the reason Joseph forgave them. And without father's protection, what would happen to them? And because they, like that servant who had so much forgiven, can't believe that forgiveness is that easy and threw his fellow servant in jail for a debt. So they decide that they must beg Joseph to take care of them by putting words in their father's mouth, words their father didn't say. Now Joseph, somewhere in his being, must know this. But instead of turning on these brothers who turned on him, he breaks down and weeps and assures them that they will be cared for and their families will be cared for. They are all part of his family. And he still sees God's action in all of this and his ability to see it another way. And his ability to practice forgiveness. And so Peter might really voice more than we want to own on any given day. 
how many times do I really have to forgive that person who keeps hurting me? Now, don't mishear me. Forgiveness does not mean allowing yourself to be abused. If you are in such a situation, it is time to leave. No, forgiveness means getting away from the hurt and quit letting the hurt own you. Anne Lamott once wrote that not forgiving someone is like going out and buying rat poisoning and taking it yourself and waiting for the rat to die. It only hurts you. It only hurts you. Forgiveness with God's help is the way forward. And that's exactly what Joseph saw. He saw how God had acted and turned things around in a way that he could have never imagined, in a way his brothers could have never imagined, in a way no one could have imagined. Because in God's world, Things happen that we can't dream of. So instead, when we're struggling with forgiveness, when we are caught on playing a scene over in our minds and over again and over again, maybe another way is to prayerfully enter with God help for forgiveness. And then think of this story. James Cagle wrote about Roy Burkhart, whose job it was in New York to find jobs for parolees, people coming out of prison on parole, and he needed to find them jobs. And there was one man who every time he asked him could find a job for a parolee. And one day the man, after doing this for years, turned to Mr. Burkhardt and said, haven't you ever wondered why I always have a job to offer? And Burkhardt had to admit he did, but had been reluctant to ask. And so the man went on to explain that when he was a young man, he had sold goods and collected from the cells. He was sent out as part of this company to do direct sales and then bring back the money. And over the course of time, he stole several hundred dollars. Well, one day when he reported for work, his boss said, Go home, I'm taking your route today. Tonight, I want you and your wife to come to dinner with me and my wife at my house. Well, the man had to sit home all day with his wife asking repeatedly, why are you not working? That night when they arrived at the boss's house, the boss and his wife welcomed him warmly, sat them down, and exchanged some pleasantries. And then the boss looked at the man and said, you need to tell your wife why you weren't at work today. The man admits, if you don't think there's a hell, I lived it that day. But he went on to tell the details to his wife in front of his boss of all he had done and taken until his wife dissolved in tears. And the boss then spoke again and said, let me be clear, what you did was morally wrong and I could throw you in prison but instead, I'm going to give you another chance. You come back to work tomorrow. 
You're not going to be able to handle money for a while. But let's see what you can do with a second chance. Eleven years later, the man became president of that company and spent the rest of his life giving others second chances. So when we are caught up in the loops of playing over and over a scene where we feel wronged, let us instead put in a loop of where we have been given another chance, where we have experienced gracious forgiveness, where we have experienced what we proclaimed in today's psalm, that the Lord is full of compassion and loving kindness. When we see life through those spectacles, how different our conversations may be. When the anger wells up about the injustice done, where can we remember forgiveness? And where can we start praying that God will help us towards forgiveness? Not so much for the sake of the person who wronged us, but for our own sake. Consider it like this. If you were to look at your life like a credit card bill, where would be the debits and the credits? Focus on where you and I have experienced grace. And together, we, with the help of God, can learn to live forgiven in community as God calls us to do. The Apostles' Creed on page 11. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. 
O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. With the Lord's encouraging words still sounding in our ears, let us frame again the prayers which linger in all human hearts, saying, Hear us, O Lord. We are weary of war and threats of war. Let us pray for peace in our world, saying, Hear us, O Lord. We fear for our children. Let us pray for all children, their health and well-being, saying, Hear us, O Lord. We are anxious about our security. Let us pray for an end to hunger and want, saying, Hear us, O Lord. We yearn for faith in an uncertain world. Let us pray for all who preach the gospel, saying, Hear us, O Lord. We tremble at our own vulnerability. Let us pray for the victims of illness, accident, and disaster. We pray for those on our long-term and short-term prayer lists, including Bill Barger, John Croteau, Jennifer Dudley, Greg Emmett, Wayne Evans, Stacy Hall, Dee Harnett, Diane Honeycutt, Stanley Horning, Jackie Mathis, Patrick Mathis, Maggie McCullough, Imogen Faye Smith and family, Tristan Spears, Juanita Strawn and family, Tom Wolf, Billy Wynn, family of Etta Mae Humans, David, Linda and Harlan, Piper, Tony's family, and all those impacted by the fires and recent storms. We lift them up to you, saying, Hear, Hear us, us, O Lord. Lord. We carry worry in our hearts. Let us pray for the needs we can hardly bear to name, saying, Hear, Hear us, O Lord. Lord. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Brian, our bishop, for Christ Church and Rugby of the Diocese of East Tennessee, for a holy comforter in Lower Burl, Brule and St. John the Baptist in Crow Creek of our companion diocese of South Dakota, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, saying, Hear us, O Lord. We pray for the parishioners of St. Thomas in Knoxville, that God may comfort them on their journeys ahead, saying, Hear us, O Lord. We give thanks for our many blessings, for the birth of Imogen Faye Smith, family member of Dexter and Elaine Cantaloo, for those celebrating birthdays this week, including Kirsten Herzog, Becky Kaiser, and Isaac Rouser, for those celebrating anniversaries, including Jamie and Larry Hartman, Elaine and Dexter Cantaloo, and Gay and Sandy Moore, for those on our parish family prayer cycle, Lucy Austin, Curtis and Susie Bag Baggett, Darris, Sue, Hannah, and Brennan Bagley, and for the School of Theology at the University of the South Suwannee. We give thanks, saying, Hear us, O Lord. We pray for those who have died, including Charlotte Merrick. Give to the departed eternal rest, saying, Hear, Hear us, O Lord. Lord. Loving God, our Father, you fashion the human heart. You know the needs that make it ache. Hear us, your children, praying as your Son taught us. His is the name we invoke. His is the kingdom we await. Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. The general thanksgiving together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives. 
by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Our closing hymn is Go Forth for God. is with us.
We are so glad you joined us this morning, and I give thanks to our wonderful staff for all their good and hard work, to our uh, music, morning music director, Pam Harris, to our deacon, Josh Weaver, to Chuck Nix, our evening music director, to Chris, Kirsten Herzog, birthday girl, who is our children's music minister, and to Rebecca Brewer, who is our youth minister, and to the man behind the camera who makes this all come together, Robbie Tullock, our faithful videographer. We uh, continue to offer a variety of things. This morning at 9, the children's ministry was live on Facebook. That's recorded. If you didn't get a chance to do it with your children, it's available from now on. In just a bit, the youth will be together at 11.30 on Facebook with Rebecca. And then at 11.15, for those who want to join us, Zoom coffee hour and the link will be sent out. If you've not received it, let us know and we will get it to you. Went out in Friday's email. Tonight, Bible study at 5. Wednesday night, Bible study at 6. Both of these are Zoom offerings. Wednesday night at 7.30, we will have evening prayers together after updates and time for question and answers. We have had our last Saturday morning walkthrough of construction because, beloved in Christ, it is time to get excited. We are in the closing weeks of our construction. And October 4th at 10 a.m., our bishop, the Right Reverend Brian Cole, his wife, Susan Weatherford, uh, will be with us to celebrate, to dedicate and consecrate our new space. We will gather in the parking lot the service will be based in the parking lot, but you will get an opportunity if you're in person to walk through in procession as part of that service and see this new space. And then at two o'clock that afternoon, we will be back and the bishop will have his dog, Jerry Lee, with him. And we will be doing a new option for blessing of the animals. We will have a drive-through blessing. So we are still planning to have a grand St. Francis Day. We want to hear from you. If you are planning to be part of it, let us know so we can appropriately plan for the numbers we have. Now, on this day, when we are called to remember the gifts we have been given, the forgivenesses shared with us, let us remember that life is short, and we do not have long to gladden the hearts of those we meet along the way. So be swift to love. Make haste to be kind. In the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>